Hey everybody, Skylar here. Today we're going to be talking about the LSL lock, and it will probably wind up being a quickie. I don't know any of the history of this lock, I've never seen the patent for it, and I don't have a cool personal story to tell about how I came into possession or some other thing about the lock. Really, I've just always thought that it was kind of neat. It's super difficult to tension as a picker, I haven't seen anybody open it so far. And the keys are kind of cool, they're these little rounded barrel keys with a small blade in the center channel. Uh, it almost seems like the tension is being applied directly to the pins, which is kind of neat. Has a good spring action on it. And it was really cheap, but I've never pulled it apart before. So that's the whole point of today. I am going to pull this apart on camera so that we can all have a look at it together. I am super nervous that I'm going to screw it up. <laughs> so let's see what happens. First, we're just going to have a look at how the lock operates by itself. The key has its bidding tucked inside of this uh, round shell. And you can see actually that this is just passed onto here. The shell is its own piece and they're coupled together so that the keys can be cut normally on a key cutting machine. Maybe they might have a specialized one that you don't actually have to drive down into a solid piece of metal or anything like that. The lock itself has a small weather guard. You can see right here. And then when we insert the key in the lock, one of the nice things is you can always get the key in the lock. It doesn't particularly matter where you start because eventually just keep turning clockwise and it will find the right position and pop open for you. All right, now with that open, we're going to attempt to get into the lock. Unscrew the retaining pin. Um, you know, there are a lot of rekeyable padlocks like this, so this isn't a particularly big exception. There we go. But what I'm curious about is what we're going to find on the other side of that little panel. All right. So I'm going to try to just remove it. Pull the cylinder out like that. All right, let's see if I can get this plate off on its own. Again, I've never had this open before and I have zero interest in breaking anything. So we're gonna be relatively careful, as careful as my... Oh geez, is that welded in? Oh, this is about to be the most disappointing. There we go. All right, we'll see if I can get that press on, pressed on again. All right, I'm already seeing it's starting to fall apart a little bit on the inside. So I think that's just the weather guard that's starting to pop out, but I'm gonna be real darn careful as I pull this plate off. The plate appears to be secured the far side oh there we go all right so yes the weather guard is in two pieces now man i really wish i had my tweezers at this point this was just a series of bad decisions <laughs> all right so there is our weather guard in two pieces very neat little spring actually now that I see how the spring works, I think I actually could have a shot at getting that back together. Oh, and very cool. The cylinder itself appears to operate how I had theorized, where there's no means of applying tension to the cylinder except through the pins themselves. All right, so here are the very cool springs from the weather guard. Just neat little rectangular tapered springs and here is the cylinder itself so completely around even inside of the lock so the only thing that you can apply tension to are the actual pins themselves which is super clever 
Um, you see our little grub screw stop here, so you can only turn the 90 degrees. It's looking like there's a sheath around the plug of the lock. I'm not 100% what the deal on that is going to be. Um, but I'm also thinking that the grub screw itself might be the only thing retaining it. So I'm going to go get my Allen wrenches and we'll have a look at the inside of this bad boy. My smallest bit here is going to do the job. All right, grub screw out. Oh, yeah, and that is clearly what is retaining it. Okay, now I'm assuming at this stage this is just a normal pin tumbler lock where the very clever bit is that the tension is applied only on the pins themselves, but as I remove this, we will see if there's anything else crazy going on. Oh, ball bearing. Neat. All right, this is the most ridiculous one of these so far. All right, so the final chamber just had a ball bearing in it. Interesting. Next chamber has quite clearly, oh, the craziest, tiniest mushroom pin I have ever seen. All right, you guys, this is going poorly, so I'm just going to disassemble the whole thing, and then we'll show you a close-up on the individual parts once I am finished. All right, you remember how I said that I felt like there was a sheath in here? There 100% is a sheath in here. Um, I don't, in the immediate, know the meaning of it, except that Paired with our incredibly shallow spool pins, this could be a real bastage to open. Cool. Oh, that is an insane looking pin. All right, the sheath is now apart. This is all turning out to be much cooler than I expected. All right, everybody, so this turns out to be a significantly cooler lock than I had expected. Um, at the moment, I still don't have a great concept of why it has the sheath, except that um, with the spool pins and the small cutouts from some of the key pins, I think that it would make for a dramatically more difficult picking situation. Um, but at the same time, it seems to be slightly flattened, so it might just be a means of shimming or getting the right shape. If anybody has ideas about that, I'm very curious. All right, we also have that last chamber had a very heavy spring and a ball bearing. That, of course, just turns out to be a small detente to realign the plug to get a nice snap. That's fine. Also, let's try to look as close into the plug as we can here. What I'm hoping that you can see is that there are ridges inside each of the pin chambers. Now, this is because there's no proper keyway shape. There's no milling on the inside of it. It's just a completely open cylinder, so there's no place for the pins to come to rest unless they have these shelves to rest on, which is precisely why we now have pins in sort of this T shape um, oh, and this one has an incredibly tiny spool right there. This is just a nice thick T, nice thick T. These might be steel, though, which would help with drilling resistance. Here's another shallow T. Looks like this one is too small for any sort of spooling. And then we have this great long T pin that has the additional material at the top of it, which catches really easily in that sheath. And now we have fairly normal springs, so nothing too much to see there. But then we have the tiniest, coolest spool pins I've ever seen. So there isn't a ton of room in the Bible of this lock. And I believe that one of the other things that ball bearing is doing for this lock is allowing for all of the driver pins to be spools, every single one of them. Otherwise, the, the big problem with having only spools in your lock is that it adds a lot of slop, which can reduce the life of the lock itself. 
So by having that ball bearing, holding the lock in place so that the key works correctly every time. So with all of these features considered, I am not at all shocked that I wasn't able to pick this and that other people that I've seen try haven't been able to pick this. Um, absolutely stunning. Unfortunately, the reassembly of the LSL has become a disaster. Uh, not the least of my problems is the fact that in the process of moving the camera back to where it is now, I have waylaid one of my spool pins. And, uh, oh, I think the sheath rolled under the hope chest as well. So I am going to take the time necessary and go get the appropriate equipment to get this thing back together and in working order as I like it a lot and I like it even more now that I've seen some of the cool things that it's doing inside. So I'm going to try not to destroy this sucker. <laughs> and with that in mind, I will see all of you next week, by which time hopefully I'll have this thing back together. <laughs> Bye, everybody.